Let's keep it short and simple this week. Code sometimes generates errors. This is especially true when you're working with XHR or databases where sometimes it's not even the code generating the error so much as reporting it. Unfortunately, if not properly handled, these errors can be catastrophic and lead to your JavaScript halting, sometimes with my favorite, and by favorite I mean this is one of the worst things about JavaScript, errors of all. Your code gives you absolutely no error message or any other indicator that anything broke. It just doesn't work. Fortunately, JavaScript has a built-in way of dealing with errors that can make occurrences like that a lot less common. Well-written code anticipates when an operation might throw an error and knows how to deal with it. We do this by using try and catch, and sometimes finally. Let's start by creating two simple functions. First, we want one that throws an error. It'll look like this. Note that we're using throw to intentionally throw an error. This is good coding practice. Well, I mean, writing a function that does nothing but throw an error is not generally good coding practice, but intentionally throwing an error if something has failed rather than just hoping JavaScript will handle it is a good idea. If nothing else, it lets us be sure to use the JavaScript error class, which we're probably going to discuss next week. Now let's also generate a success message with this code. Straightforward. All right, the next step is to use this code. We do this in what's called a try-catch block, which looks very similar to an if-else block. Here's the code. Note that, as the comment says, we're not going to see the success response in our console. In a try-catch block, once an error has happened, you move straight to the catch part, with the generated error being passed along so you can do something with it. Now, why use try-catch? Well, because if we just went bareback, so to speak, with this code, all of our JS, even if there are 50 lines after this, would stop working as soon as that error is thrown. You'd get a console error. In fact, let's take a look at it. There we go, uncaught error. That's the point of catching an error. With try catch, you have the opportunity to handle the error yourself, and then your code keeps on running. We can prove that because the next block of code we're going to write will actually run, even with the first try catch block still in the file. Speaking of which, let's take a look at how that works. You have to delete these, because otherwise your code doesn't run. Save, refresh, much better. Now, this is where finally comes in. Sometimes you have stuff you want to have happen even if an error occurs. One example that springs to mind, turning off a loading spinner. As we saw previously, anything after a throw error in the try block isn't running. But we can use finally to keep on moving. Check out this code. Save that. Run it. And you'll see that we get both our error logged to the console and our success response. Sweet. That's it for this week. Next time, we'll take a look at that error class and talk about why it's useful. See you then.